good morning. So I'm still in my PJs. I have so much to do today. But before I started, I wanted to just do a vlog with you guys while I have my morning tea and talk about flight attendant lingo. So you may have heard certain words before as a passenger or if you just started flying, some words still kind of confuse you. So we're just going to go over a couple of them so you have more of a knowledge of what they mean. I'm wearing my glasses, haven't switched into contacts yet, so if you get a glare from the windows, I'm really sorry. That's what I get for not getting reflective coat. Lesson learned. Got to make a note on that. All right, I'm going to put my tea down here, and then switch this over, and use this jar to pick up some words randomly as we go. First word is duty-free period, or DFP. A duty-free period is basically a time, it's usually a 24-hour period where a flight attendant is off, so it's a day off. We don't have regular days off, like Saturdays and Sundays, so instead we have duty-free periods where we're not flying at all. There are a certain amount of days in a month where we're not allowed to fly. It's, for legal reasons, we have to have a certain amount of duty-free period days off, between flights to to rest and not work. Turns. Turns are basically what you as a passenger would call a round trip flight. But for us, while we're working, a turn is essentially a round trip on the same day. So for example, maybe tomorrow I'm working a turn to Chicago. That means I'm probably leaving from New York City, working a flight to Chicago, and the minute we land, just turn back around to New York. So a turn, a Chicago turn. FA. We normally refer to each other as FAs, meaning flight attendants. That's all it is. A lot of people still use the word steward and stewardess. It's not offensive to some people, not offensive to me, but now the terms are flight attendants. So instead of saying flight attendants, we just say FAs. Illegal. So this doesn't have anything to do with actual federal crime or being or doing something illegal, but in the aviation world, Pilots and flight attendants go illegal, meaning we have exceeded our work time or duty time in the air. For legalities and labor laws, we're not allowed to work more than a certain amount of hours a day or flight time a day. So if we exceed that flight time, we essentially go illegal. So we're illegal for the rest of the day. We have to be put up. In a hotel, you can't fly again until we get a certain amount of minimum rest. Unfortunately, that may be some of the reasons why your flights may have gotten delayed or canceled because either the pilots have gone illegal or the cabin crew has gone illegal or both or the whole entire crew has gone illegal. Holding. When you hear that the plane is in a holding pattern or we're holding, that just means that we are circling in the air. Air traffic control is telling us to stay in the air until there's clearance or there could be more reasons than that besides air traffic control but one example is we might not be able to land because there's just too many planes landing or trying to descend so they're going to ask us to stay in a holding pattern until it's clear so holding when you hear we are holding that's what it means dead heading so it's a funny word <laughs> because when I first started, I'm like, what does deadheading mean? Um, I love to deadhead. All flight attendants would prefer deadhead in their work sequence. Deadheading means that you're basically getting paid to just fly as a passenger. They may need you to work a trip to the airport that they're sending you to. So they're going to deadhead you from your home base to that airport and you get paid for that flight time. So it's pretty awesome to get paid for not really working or just flying as a passenger. Galley. Galley is our workspace in the front or the back of the plane. It's where we keep our carts. It's where we have all of our storage for our beverage service. So when you enter the plane, that's the, that's the forward galley. That's what you see in the front. And when you're in the back of the plane, that's what you see in the back, the galley area. Reserve. Oh. oh, dreaded reserve. Reserve means that basically the company owns you for that time of day or month. When you are a reserve flight attendant, you don't have a set schedule. 
So you're sitting at home, for example, like right now, waiting to see if you get an assignment to fly out. And you have no idea where you're going. It can send you anywhere. So I have a video dedicated to what I pack when I'm on reserve for the times where I don't even know where they're going to send me. So you should check that out. But reserve means that you're on call. Base. So when you hear where are you based or what's your home base, that just means where do you fly out of it? I'm based in New York. I don't live in New York, but I'm based there. So every time I have to start a trip, it has to start from New York and it has to end in New York. So my first workday trip will leave New York. I'll be away for two, three, four days, whatever. And I have to come back and end it in New York. Non-rev versus revenue. Non-revenue passengers are us. When we fly on standby or when we fly for leisure, we are flying as non-revenue passengers. We are not passengers that bought a confirmed book ticket. Those are revenue passengers. So revenue passengers get precedence over non-revenue passengers when they do fly. Sometimes you'll see yourself on the standby list and you're going to see revenue standby and non-revenue standby. Revenue standbys are people that may have missed their connection and have been rolled over to the next flight, and they get precedence over non-revenue standbys if there are empty seats. Ground time and layover time. When I'm talking to my friends or just regular people outside the aviation industry, I always have to explain ground time and layover time because they confuse it. They'll always ask me, well, where are you laying over before you stay somewhere for the night or reach your final destination. And I have to explain to them that it's just the ground time. Ground time are those moments where we're waiting to continue on with the next flight of the day. A layover is when we're actually done with our work day, we're done with flying, and we're at our destination city where they're gonna give us a hotel and we're gonna lay over for a couple of hours to do our legal rest, to sleep and relax into our next flight time or our next work day. Standby. When you fly standby, you don't have a regular seat. So you have to wait until the end of the flight where the gate agents see how many empty seats there are in the whole aircraft, and then they'll assign whoever is on the standby list the seats remaining. A lot of flight attendants, mostly all aviation employees, fly on standby, leisurely, or commuting when they want to travel somewhere. So we fly standby, and that's an important thing to tell people when they ask for buddy passes. The first thing I tell someone, you might want to reconsider because we fly standby, so you might find a good flight deal where you're paying maybe $30 more, but at least you have a confirmed seat. Sometimes you don't make the first flight, and you have to wait for the second or third, fourth, might not get on. Recently, my boyfriend had to sleep at Phoenix Airport because he couldn't get on a flight and I felt really bad. But that is the world of flying standby. FAA. So FAA is not the same thing as an FA. An FA, again, is a flight attendant. An FAA is, stands for Federal Aviation Administration. So these are the head honchos. They're in charge of the safety of passengers and flight attendants in the aviation industry. FAA, you're going to hear flight attendants refer to FAA rules and laws and legalities on the plane, when we do say those things, please take them serious because when we break those rules, there are fines and you can get in trouble as a flight attendant and the passenger by not following these rules. So we're not trying to be mean, we're just trying to be safe and play by the rules because the FAA industry is in charge. Bid. Bidding means that we are basically requesting our schedules or vacation time, days off, we bid for it because there are so many flight attendants in one airport or one base and you're either very senior or very junior and the way that we get awarded our days off or vacations is by bidding a very selective number of available days that you can request. Every month we get a sheet of days that are available for the month and you will select, I need the 25th or I need the 23rd. You're going to select a number of days or a week pattern you may want to work for the next month. You will get awarded those based on your seniority. You're bidding for your vacation, just like at an auction. You're bidding to see if you can hold what you requested. Mainline versus regional. A mainline is basically an airline that is more 
global or owns more routes or bases in regional. Think of region. It flies a smaller amount of routes. It's normally not too international and it stays within the U.S. or domestic flights. Ferry flight. Oh my god, I have not done these yet. I Three years of flying and I'm still begging to ferry a flight. It basically means that you're just flying the plane from one city to another or one country to another. I have heard awesome stories where flight attendants get called on reserve to just ferry a flight to Barcelona or back or back from Barcelona for any amount of reasons. It could just be the reason that maybe there's a shortage of aircraft or planes and we need that specific airplane so we're gonna send it to you. They'll just call a bunch of people to fill in a minimum crew and ferry that flight over to any destination. You're getting paid to just fly for hours without any passengers. It's just a completely empty plane. So I'm still waiting to get lucky enough to ferry a flight. PAX. You'll probably see or hear this word a lot. I've seen it a lot on Instagram and we don't ever really say PAX, but you'll see it written down like on memes or whatever. And PAX, P-A-X, just means passengers. It's just a short way of referring to passengers. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope this cleared up any confusion you may have had with hearing flight attendant lingo or what words mean. Don't be shy to ask any questions you may have. I'll be posting more vlogs and more helpful tips regarding travel and flight attendant lifestyle. And I hope you keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the page. Follow me on social media. My Instagram is wonderfully exposed. Use a hashtag, it's a wonderful life. It truly is, and I hope to see you in the air. Happy flying, guys, and have a great day.